can't tell you how honored I am as a tribal court judge to get to appear to tell you about how the Law and Order Act is working in Indian country, at least in the Northwest. I very often think about words of my ancestors when I reflect on those values. And in this case, Carlos Montezuma, who when he was talking about the state of oppression of Indian people in 1915, said, if it wasn't for the sturdiness, for the strength, and for the moral value of our ancestors, would we even be here today? That is the three issues that I'd like to address before the committee today the sturdiness of Indian people. How do tribal courts view the enhanced sentencing provisions of the Law and Order Act? Second, the physical strength. How does the law, other than the Law and Order Act, support tribes? And third, the physical strength. How do we treat our kids? The first is how does the enhanced sentencing provisions actually impact tribal court on a daily basis? I have to say that it is a difficult, at best, issue for tribal courts and tribal court judges. There's a great deal of planning that's involved in exercising the enhanced sentencing, and at the end of the day, Mr. Chairman, it's all about cost. Although the responsibility of public defense, although the responsibility of law-trained judges and law-trained prosecutors came with the Law and Order Act, the funds, Mr. Chairman, did not come with it particularly in terms of costs of incarceration, although the Bureau of Prisons rightly under the Act has promulgated regulations to allow us to use the Bureau of Prisons, it's only for major crimes. Tulalip, like many tribes in the Northwest, for most of our most serious offenders, uses exclusion tools to exclude them from the boundaries of our reservation, and if you violate that provision, you can then be cited with trespass. Now we'll be in the position of figuring out how to house those offenders on our own, because that's not covered by the Tribal Law and Order Act. The costs of incarceration are going to be substantial, and in Indian country, we have to balance that with education and with health and with services that are needed by our community. Tulalip Tribes runs a full service court system. We have a thousand new cases a year, 10 staff members, two judges, two probation officers, and the one thing that hasn't changed since 1980, Mr. Chairman, is that the Bureau of Indian Affairs provides Tulalip $30,000 to run that court system. It simply is not enough. Tulalip will be taking advantage of the enhanced sentencing provisions, but in a careful and methodically planned way so that we don't use the scarce resources our community needs for housing prisoners. The second thing I want to talk about is the physical strength of our ancestors, and that really is the law. I'm absolutely grateful that the Law and Order Act recognized that tribes can be given more authority and that that comes with a responsibility. Unfortunately, the law sends cross messages all the time. Just this month, the Washington State Supreme Court said that tribal law enforcement officers cannot arrest drunk driving offenders who are driving drunk on the reservation if they happen to pull over on the side of the road that is the boundary of the reservation on non-reservation land. Chiefs of police all over the state of Washington from tribal chiefs of police are worried that it encourages persons to essentially flee to the border. So as if the decision in Oliphant which said you can't stop those persons or arrest them within the boundaries of your reservation wasn't bad enough, now Erickson says, and you should flee to the border. How can we really say that we've increased safety when we've sent that mixed message? We need to send the message that tribes have full authority within the boundaries of their reservation. Last, the physical strength, which is the strength of our children. You heard the statistics from Chairman Ide. Half of the juveniles in the federal system are native. The part that we didn't hear is half of those kids were abused and neglected kids. We need to figure out how to beef up the provisions of the Indian Child Welfare Act to give notice to the tribes so that they can look at all children the same, whether they are incarcerated or whether they're abused and neglected. 
because Mr. Chairman, they are the same. We do this for the future of our children in the ways of our ancestors. Thank you for allowing me to testify.